Hey everyone, today we're baking a Japanese matcha strawberry shortcake. It's Isaac and welcome back to the channel. I'm really excited about this one, so let's get going. We'll start by making a strong matcha base by mixing melted butter, water and matcha powder together. As usual, you can find the full list of ingredients in the description box below. So, moving on to the eggs then. But before we start whisking, prepare a warm tray of water. Make sure the water is no more than 50 degrees Celsius because we don't want to scramble our eggs. Once that is ready, gently place a mixing bowl with your eggs into the water and start mixing on a low speed. Do this for about a minute or until the eggs start foaming up just like this. Increase the speed to high and start adding sugar one spoonful at a time. Whisk for about 5 minutes or so, or until the batter has this nice airy ribbon-like consistency. You may be asking why this strange setup? Well, there's a whole load of baking science behind this which will take far too long to explain. But in short, beating the eggs slowly in a warm environment will allow the protein to first unwind, and trap more air later on. The hallmark of a good Japanese shortcake is how light and delicate it is, so this step is super important. Next, we want to gently fold in the matcha butter into the eggs. Do this slowly and make sure you are lifting from the bottom of the mixture and over itself with each fold. This helps evenly incorporate in the flavour without taking out too much of the air in the batter. Stop when the matcha green colour has made its way evenly throughout the mixture. To finish off the batter, sieve in some all-purpose flour and matcha powder and start folding again just like before. You can stop once you don't see any more flowers and lump in the mixture. Try not to overmix, otherwise you'll end up with a very hard and flat cake. And just to help the cake release later on, I'm going to line the baking tray with some parchment before I pour in the batter. Give the baking tin a quick tap on the counter to release any uneven large air pockets before baking at 170 degrees Celsius for 25 minutes. The beauty of a sponge cake like this is that we're not using any baking powder, so the cake should rise up evenly with a flat top which will make our lives a lot easier assembling the cake later on. Whilst the cake is baking, let's make some syrup. Melt some sugar in boiling water until it's fully dissolved. I've decided to add a bit of orange liqueur to give it a little bit of a kick but feel free to leave this out if you don't like booze in your cake. Okay, once the cake is out of the oven, just give it some time to cool. It'll crumble if we try to slice it when it's still hot. We are making a cake with three layers, so we will have to slice the cake into three even pieces. This can be a bit challenging if you don't have a cake leveler like me. A good trick is to find something to prop up your knife so that it can cut evenly all the way through. In my case, I found a jar lid which was the perfect height. Put the sponge layers aside for now and prepare the rest of the filling. We'll start by slicing some strawberries. And to be honest, I don't really have a special tip here, except to buy really fresh ones. They smell so good. Oh, and also, make sure you leave a few whole strawberries to top the cake at the end. Finally, we want to whip up some cream in a cold mixing bowl, because cream whips up a lot better in colder environments. Put your mix on high speed and mix thoroughly with some sugar until it's nice, thick and smooth. A quick note on the type of cream, generally you want ones with fat between 35-40%, to 40%. any less it may not hold its shape, any more the cream will not be smooth enough when whipped up. All that's left is to assemble the cake. Start off with a layer of sponge, brush generously with the sugar syrup before piling on a layer of cream and strawberries. Repeat this until you've used up all three layers of your sponge.
coat the whole cake in whipped cream using the spatula and the cake smoother. I would admit, this takes a little bit of practice, but remember, it doesn't always have to look perfect because it will still taste amazing at the end of the day. For the finishing touches, we'll top the cake with some strawberries just like this. Remember to leave the cake in the fridge for at least 30 minutes before serving, otherwise the cake might end up collapsing if you cut into it too soon. Matcha, strawberries and cakes are three of my favourite things, and this recipe somehow manages to combine all of them in one. Just wonderful. So, what do you think? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next one.